you need to grab people's attention. If I started by, hi, I'm Linda Katz Wallner, and today I'm going to talk about, it's like everybody could start that way. But if I start with, uh, let's say, who here is concerned about public speaking? Or did you know that 74% of people have concerns about public speaking? You know, or I, if you start with a question, or if you start with a story, or you start with a quote, reframe your nervousness as excitement. You should say, my adrenaline's rushing and I'm excited. For non-native speakers, this is the biggest problem. They want to sound proficient. And so I think it's the same thing with native speakers. We want to sound like we know what we're talking about, so we just keep talking. We don't want to pause because then maybe we sound like we're thinking too much. Well, we sound more mindful. And our delivery is so much better when we pause. I often suggest to people when you start your talk, which is when you're probably, or not probably, you are most nervous, start talking to a friendly face. The interesting thing is there's a study from Princeton that says in one-tenth of a second, when they did a study, in one-tenth of a second, somebody looks at you and decides how credible you are, how professional you might be whether you're trustworthy, whether they want to continue that conversation with you in one-tenth of a second. And when they checked those people 45 minutes later or an hour later and checked out that same impression, it remained the same. Now, I'm sorry to tell you that because if you were nervous to begin with, now you realize the minute somebody looks at you, they form a first impression. Why am I the one talking? I'm talking because they asked me to. They must be doing it because they know I know about the topic or they want me to gain experience. Just think about why you are the one talking. I don't think it's ever going to be the case that they want me to talk so I can make a fool of myself and show people I really don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> be careful about some of your words. I guess, maybe, I hope, perhaps. They don't sound that confident. I believe sounds more confident. I believe this is the way I would approach it. A lot of owning the room is the visual. Right? How you stand. Are you seated? Think about if you're giving a virtual meeting, and I know this myself, there's more energy if you're standing up. It's more like a presentation. If you sit down and you slouch down or whatever you do, you don't have that same energy. You don't own the room. And just like if you're giving a presentation, everybody else may be seated, but you may stand up and that's how you own the room, whether you're six foot three or four foot 11. Okay, it doesn't, the height isn't the answer. It's how you deal with your space is the answer. So ideally you should be standing with your legs and you can't see this right now, but about six feet apart. So I'm sorry, six inches apart, not six feet. <laughs> <laughs> then you're on America's Got Talent and you're doing acrobatics. But, but stand with your feet like shoulder length apart so you're grounded. Very often women, you can't see it, will cross one leg over the other. And then, then they start rocking. They're not like the tree. Think of yourself as a tree. So six inches apart. Maybe one foot could step a little bit in front of the other. But take up your space. The most important thing that should go on in your head, and I think it was Jonathan was saying, they're going, what are they going to think of me? And we all worry about, what do they think? Do I sound educated? Do I know what I'm talking about? I'm forgetting what I'm going to say. What are they going to think about me? It's not about you. You need to think about who you're speaking to. It's all about them. So box breathing is as simple as, and I'll have you do it with me in a minute. You're going to breathe in for four seconds. You're going to hold for four seconds. You're going to exhale for four seconds. You're going to hold for four seconds. And by doing that for several cycles, you will calm yourself down. Working the room is always helpful because then when you get up to talk, if the room happened to be all new people and you didn't know them, when you got to work the room before you were started, all of a sudden you get started and you have people in the audience who you've already had a conversation with. The most important thing that should go on in your head, 
And I think it was Jonathan was saying, they're going, what are they going to think of me? And we all worry about what do they think? Do I sound educated? Do I know what I'm talking about? I'm forgetting what I'm going to say. What are they going to think about me? It's not about you. You need to think about who you're speaking to. It's all about them. It's all about I'm ready. So just like I mentioned, when I feel a little bit of that adrenaline rushing, my response to that is, great, my adrenaline's rushing. Now I have the energy to perform. When we're talking about public speaking, look at all the things we have to think about. Right? It's not just the speaking. It's do you smile? Do you have eye contact? Do you have anxiety? What should you do with your hands? How should you stand? What about your voice? How fast should you speak? Should you pause? What if you have the ums? How do you relax yourself? What's your pronunciation like? Do you have a regional dialect? Do you have a foreign accent? My goodness, no wonder we're nervous. On a scale of one to 10, not a scale, on the list of one to 10, where do you think public speaking is going to show up? Any ideas? You want to raise a finger on how many numbers, what number public speaking is? One, one, one. Okay, everybody's got it. Okay, so public speaking is going to be higher on the list than death or sickness or deep water, which is one of my top fears, even though I know how to swim. Financial problems, I think, may be jumping up higher during this day. And again, things change in different times. So, of course, Illness and financial problems are going to be way up there. Insects and bugs, heights, but public speaking has always been thought of as the number one fear. And if you've ever heard what Jerry Seinfeld had said, basically at a funeral, the average person would rather be in the casket than giving the eulogy, because the eulogy is way down there on the list. I mean, the eulogy is way up there, dying is way down there on the list. A lot of owning the room is the visual, right? How you stand, are you seated? Think about if you're giving a virtual meeting, and I know this myself, there's more energy if you're standing up. It's more like a presentation. If you sit down and you slouch down or whatever you do, you don't have that same energy. You don't own the room. And just like, if you're giving a presentation, everybody else may be seated, but you may stand up and that's how you own the room, whether you're six foot three or four foot 11. Okay, it doesn't, the height isn't the answer. It's how you deal with your space is the answer. So ideally you should be standing with your legs and you can't see this right now, but about six feet apart. So I'm sorry, six inches apart, not six feet. <laughs> <laughs> then you're on America's Got Talent and you're doing acrobatics. But, but stand with your feet like shoulder length apart so you're grounded. Very often women, you can't see it, will cross one leg over the other. And then, then they start rocking. They're not like the tree. Think of yourself as a tree. So six inches apart. Maybe one foot could step a little bit in front of the other. But take up your space. When we're talking about public speaking, look at all the things we have to think about. Right? It's not just the speaking. It's do you smile? Do you have eye contact? Do you have anxiety? What should you do with your hands? How should you stand? What about your voice? How fast should you speak? Should you pause? What if you have the ums? How do you relax yourself? What's your pronunciation like? Do you have a regional dialect? Do you have a foreign accent? My goodness, no wonder we're nervous.